Hi everyone, Mike Fields here, owner of Adams Trust. So this is going to be a two-part instructional video. Part one, we're going to go over the parts list and components for everything that comes as a part of the Adams Trust uh, system. So when you get a delivery of one of our kits or come pick them up at our shop with our trusses, what all you're going to get there. And then part two, we filmed uh, an actual erection of some trusses and then putting on the uh, roof purlins and wall girts and uh, brace rods and purlin braces as well. And then hopefully we'll have a follow-up video with some uh, sheet metal best practices and how to skin your building. So before we get to that, I uh, wanted to cover our two different types of trusses and because they do affect your parts list, just some slight differences between the two. So first we have our um, standard truss and this is a 412 pitch only, the one we've been making for the longest or most common truss. And it has, you can see the, the bottom is wider than the top, so it has a tapered design and um, the, there's a 45 degree brace at the haunch. The second is what we call our side mount and it, it's actually, it comes in multiple pitches. Uh, you can see here it's a parallel rafter, so it's going to be uh, the same size from top to bottom and uh, the mount is just a little bit different there. So with that, let's move on to your parts list, uh, what all is gonna come in the kit and where those components go. So you will receive various quantities of each of these parts based on your building. Um, but I wanted to go through the parts and show you what each of them are called. Uh, and then we'll use those terms throughout the video. Uh, so first up, the large bolt, this would be a three quarter inch bolt half inch bolt, three eighths bolt, lag screws. Uh, this is a bundle of purlin braces. And then here we just have a single purlin brace, a flat strap. Uh, this piece is a wedge washer. And then on the ground here, you can see the end of a brace rod. Uh, they're typically pretty long, so I can't get the entire thing in a shot. So uh, we talked about the differences between the two types of trusses. Uh, the reason for that is the three quarter inch bolts will be used on the standard truss to connect the rafter to the leg. You can see them in the plate here. Uh, 40s and smaller will have four of these per leg. 50s and 60s have five. And then the uh, half inch nuts and bolts are what connects the peak plates together so that's going to be here on the truss and there's the holes the difference on the side mount trusses is that you have the peak plate and the butt plate where the leg meets the rafters are all the half inch bolts so you will if you have a side mount rafter you won't have any of the large three quarter inch um, nuts and bolts and then lastly the lag screws are used with the flat strap which is the piece to the side over here and that secures the leg to your wall guards here we have a purlin brace installed so you remember the small 3 8 bolt will be for your purlin brace each of the vertical posts on your truss so you have your diagonal webbing and your vertical posts. We'll have a hole punched in it, and that is to accept the purlin brace, uh, or the bolt for the purlin brace. And then coming out, connected to your two by four, it just has two small holes in the end of it. And you'll use screws to attach it to your purlins. So that is your purlin brace overview and we typically alternate these going up the truss. So looking at this, this would come off to the left side and then the holes are ambidextrous. So the next one would go off to the right. Okay, so next up we have our brace rods, uh, which these are gonna be, you can see the end of one here. These are gonna be usually at least 10 feet long. So hard to get the whole thing in the shot, but you got your brace rod with a 3 8 nut on the end, and then your wedge washer, which you can see 
the side profile of here. And those go with your um, brace rods and they compensate for the angle. So here's an example of some installed brace rods in the legs. You can see it goes from the top of the leg to the bottom. And then in the rafters above as well, excuse the light, but you can see them going from the top cord to top cord of the rafters. And typically there's gonna be two sets per rafter. And then I will show you how the wedge washers work. So you can see the brace rod is coming through at an angle and that wedge washer gives you a flat surface to tighten your 3 8 nut down onto. All right, now that we've covered the parts section and you know what all your Adams truss kit includes, it's on to the fun part, standing your trusses and getting your building in the dry. Uh, before we get to that section of the video though, just a few words of advice. Keep in mind that the contractors we have filmed doing this are professionals and they do this every day. Uh, as a self builder, I wouldn't expect to move as fast as they do uh, necessarily. So in the video you'll see we have the trusses stood and the purlins on in half a day. If you don't move that fast, don't think anything of it. It's no big deal. Uh, take your time and be patient. Second, um, they have developed systems and methods that work well for them. Um, but if you see something, you know, they're climbing the wall girts on the outside of the building and you would feel more safe standing on a ladder, please do it that way. This is an instructional concepts video to run you through the steps of how to put up one of our buildings, but not necessarily, hey, you should follow every footstep that this uh, person made. So with that in mind, uh, let's watch how to stand some trusses. All right, so your first step is going to be to bolt your legs to your rafters on the ground. It's easier to assemble them beforehand. This is the haunch. The leg meets the rafter and you'll use your big, this is your big inch and a half by three quarter bolt. It goes right in there. And then your smaller bolts. Half inch by one inch will go at the peak. Your guy in the main lift will get each side of the rafter. You feed your bolt through, put your other side of the rafter up, and bolt the peak together. All right, we got our jib pole on our tractor here. Hear it near the haunch. Right, we got our first truss in place. I'm gonna stake that off to secure it. Like a two by four rope or something. We got the second half of our rafter here. Passing it to the guys in the boom lift. So we'll set it down on our anchor bolts here. Colby's got a level. Make sure the leg is level before we set our anchor. Then you screw it to this 2x4. Set my anchor here. Set the level of the leg. We've got our trusses stood and they've snapped the line here. You can barely see it on the concrete to set the plumb on the top of the rafter. Once he gets that secure, they'll screw the board in on the top to the rafter and off to the stake down here. We've got our trusses stood and they've snapped the line here. You can barely see it on the concrete to set the plumb on the top of the rafter. 
once he gets that secure, I'll screw the board chain on the top to the rafter and off to the stake down here. Truss is going up. Got it stood with the tractor. He took a measurement on the bottom of the leg. It's a 12 foot bay. He'll measure the top. Make sure the distance is the same. Put your purling screws in. All right. Second truss still, other side of the building. Took our measurement across the bottom. I'm fastening this board. These guys are secure in the peak. the joint so he's, he's splitting the clip right here on this side and we're gonna measure, make sure they have the same distance top and bottom we got the bottom board on and we're gonna put one on each side of the peak we're gonna do the second one one at the bottom one at the top. As we sand each truss, that's all we'll put on. Get all those trusses stood. And then we'll come back and put on all the parts. Yeah. TJ, our resident acrobat here. I'd probably recommend using a ladder. But you can do it this way. Third truss going up. using two by six roof purlins on this 12 footers 12 foot bay normal would be a 20 span two trusses these two by sixes come a little over 12 foot from the lumber yard so each of these have already been chopped down to 12 foot exactly See our pile there on the slab. Sometimes your concrete guys don't get the pick the hard one, Rick. Anchor bolts set just right. And they just take a little convincing. One benefit of these trusses is you can stand them by hand. Yes, it's nice to have a tractor, but web truss weight makes it feasible to stand it by hand. Got a little, especially with some scaffolding at the top. Pass the top up. the sun I'll stand this by hand now this is a 36 foot wide rafter 40 is probably the highest widest you'd want to go by hand but a 24 would be really easy so pass it to the guy on your scaffolding or lift set the leg down near the anchor bolt Lift it up. And she's on. A little less than an hour. Got all six trusses stood, braced off. And we'll start putting our purl in the girts on. Putting our uh, side girts on. We got them cut to length. One guy on each end. And you're framing out your 
wall girts. You may notice these are hanging past the truss. And they're not 100% even. That won't matter. They're just so you can tie into your end wall. It's going to wrap around and be running this way. And that gives you room for your end wall girts to tie in. And they also notice on this other side, they left them hanging off instead of cutting the board. That's because this is going to have a garage door here. Now they can tie into the overhead door frame. Now we're putting in our wind bracing, brace rods. That's what these washers will be for. You see how it compensates for the angle. Flat surface. Put your nut on. And we've got our second brace rod in here. See the X pattern. I'll show you that washer again. You may be able to see it a little better on this side. It's going to sit like that and have your nut catching the end there. To also go and the rafters once we get to those. You may notice these end clips are bent up a little bit. Even with the truss leg. What that does, they do not come from the factory like that. You have to bend them yourself, but Put this last board on the outside of that clip instead of the inside. And now it's in line with your wall girts. So the TJ is down there tightening the X bracing. You can see him. Brad is down here with a level on this leg. Do that level. Checking the level as they tighten the X bracing. Similar, similar to the walls, there's wind bracing in the rafters. Which is what Colby's tightening right now. There. Well, on the end walls, they run the purlins out fast and they take a chalk line, make that mark. So they're all the same square and then cut the purlins the same length. A lot more efficient that way. Otherwise, you have to measure each board individually. Same process as the other side. Cutting those roof parts. End wall framing. Uh, you may notice this is a different building than the original video. Uh, my camera died, but we will make do. So um, this last girt, this is the end wall. It's tied into your wall girts. And then what you're going to see is you just have at the same level your wall girts running down. Now this end wall has a garage door in it, which yours may not. But So every two feet from uh, the wall girts on each of your eave sides, you just have horizontal boards running across. Now what we do is take a measurement at the top and then on the base plate you're going to see these marks pencil marks uh, along and the reason for that is so that your uh, vertical uprights we want to make sure that they're straight and plumb and 
one last thing your bottom plate uh, that's coming across both of them make sure these two bottom plates so the one on the right with the anchor bolts and the one standing vertically those need to be treated boards because they're in contact with the concrete and a lot of times your, your lumber is not going to uh, span this entire way so you see right there that middle board has a joint um, which is totally fine we just like to stagger the joints so you see a joint the board above it is no joint and one above it with a joint one additional thing on the end wall framing so you'll see your first uh, six or so girts here depending on your height are gonna be just a flat end and then the way we tie into the fascia boards you'll see each of those top uh, four girts there are cut on an angle to match uh, the rise of your fascia board there so just gives it a nice look uh, different people do it different way but we found this to be the the best and uh, gives you the best look and, and best uh, structural framing